good sense. Um, this talk is different maybe than the other talks, and most times it's different because it's not a technical talk. I'm in the security for more than 10 years and been a developer a long time before. And what I see is all people, when they have a problem, we are in technology, we have perfect time. We have a problem, we call out for a tool to solve our problems. Isn't it? Tool solves everything. Unfortunately, they don't. And that's a bigger problem in security than tools. It's a human interaction. So that's about me. That's my face. Okay, I was uh, some years younger. That's great here. Must be the security. Yes. <coughs> so I don't know. So almost, uh, it became my hobby in 2005. I went to my first almost conference. And being a developer, I was enlightened by all of the security stuff they have for free and better. So kind of mine, um, I think most of the time in my day I spent for all of and uh, even my small nephew asked me if I actually had obligations to wear a, a piece of clothes with a wasp on for every day by contract. I said, no, it's just, I get it for free. <laughs> so when you do security, you get all free shirts and free clothes. Win, win. <laughs> I first thought about this talk in 2012, four years ago. Four years ago, I crashed my previous motorbike, I bought a new motorbike, and I took my wife for a ride up to the North Star. So we went from the Netherlands to Germany, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, all the way up. It was really great. But it was very hard for me to not work for two weeks. I promised my wife I would not work two weeks. And then the North Cup on the motorbike, you don't have much internet connection. And I don't know how it's in the Ukraine, but driving and using a mobile phone. Ever tried it on a motorbike? How did it end up? You still have your phone? Sorry? You tried it on a motorbike? On a motorbike? Oh yeah. How did it work? No accident. <laughs> it cost me two mobile phones. So I stopped. So on I was there and I think my wife on the back of the bike, she wouldn't allow that from my mobile phone. But I had no internet connection anyway. And with all this fear, uncertainty, and disorder in the security thing, being away from my work for two weeks, disaster must happen. And guess what? I come back after two weeks, nothing happened. Yes, there were breaches, there were fraud, everything, but hey, the world keeps turning around. I still had my job, I couldn't do my online banking, I couldn't buy my grocery, and nothing really happened. Now, isn't that weird? We say, hey, security is so important. Then you are away for two weeks, and I assume you are also take vacations now and then, and nothing really changed. And I thought about it, and at that time also there were a lot of talks about the boxes. You heard that? Get out of your box, think outside of the box. It's all bull. You cannot think outside your box. Why? Your box is what you are. Either you have two personalities, yes, then you have two boxes. Maybe. I never tried that. But the box is what you are. And you can widen your box, you can big make your box bigger. And you can box gets bigger by experience, by open your eyes, by talking to other people. Who here is here with a colleague? Nobody? Your question? Who is here with a colleague? Colleague? Colleague. Somebody here who works with us together. <laughs> who is sitting next to a colleague? <laughs> Why? <laughs> This is your chance to meet other people. Yeah, uh, and I guess most people in the off party will stay next to their colleagues. That's how humans are. Maybe yeah, you're different. Yeah. I will see, I will witness. I hope not too much. <laughs> but it's how humans are. We stay in our safe zone. I kind of weird for security because I did not study. I don't have an IT or security background. I was a trained mechanic for injection molding machines. 
So I taught myself PLC programming, then taught myself C programming and Java programming. In 1998, I went into Java development, and I was astonished. The great thing is, when you do robotic PLC programming, if something goes wrong, you have a very good feedback. It's very impressive if the robotic arm gets squeezed by an injection molding machine. And definitely your boss is not really happy, so you can also get good feedback from him about the costs. So I went into web development, and I see about transactions, processes going on, and the little on checks there are, definitely back then, that everything is good before something happens. And I was like, guys! What is about no point of return and validation and everything you said? And said, ah, it will be okay. It's expectation. And I said, my box is filled with my knowledge about text multi machines, about what can be going wrong when a physical system, a PLC program robot, does something wrong. I have seen people get hurt because they didn't care, uh, they didn't were enough afraid of what could go wrong. Then the web development, we are so far away from that what next our software does. That maybe we should look into the details. So, take that and I also had this nice talk, uh, a little nice talk on TEDx, by Ernesto Stoglini. And I really encourage you to watch it. And he tells us in his talk about his time in the 70s when he was a young guy from Italy. And there in Africa, guess what? There was hunger and starving. So in Italy, they said, eight workers, let's go to Africa. What Italians can do really, really well is growing vegetables. So he went there as a young boy to Africa. I think it was Zimbabwe, I don't know, not sure. No. Makes a difference with country. They found a river that yearly goes over his bed. It's a very fertile ground and they started growing vegetables. And he says it's nice in this in this like Italian made way, like in Italy tomatoes were like this, there tomatoes were like that. It was great. And they almost could harvest the vegetables that grew. Guess what? The hippos came and ate all. And they were like, oh my god, the hippos! And the people said, yes, grow vegetables there. Like, why didn't you tell us? They said, you never ask. And that's the same problem how people think about problems in other communities. Whom of you is a developer? Who is a security guy? Who has no idea what he's doing for his job? <laughs> okay. Security guys? Developers? Some people are both. It's interesting. That's how it should be. So, as security people, the security guys, how many of you have software development backgrounds? <laughs> so those are the hackers. Aren't you? Are you a hacker? <laughs> we all know that an ethical hacker, white hacker. Don't talk about that hacker. The great thing is about the hackers, they can make break stuff. They don't have to tell you how to fix it, they only can say, hey look, it's broken. <laughs> Isn't that weird? You only have to fix it. It's very easy to find flaws. Actually, I did my first code review when I did never heard about code reviews. But then I was a set mechanic for checking all the machines. I taught myself PLC programming, but I was not allowed to touch the code. Because there was a good developer. And he was a code, so it must be good. But sometimes it happened that the injection molding was closed and the robotic arm was still in the between mold and crash. So something was wrong. So he came down to us common people and said, What have you done this time? <laughs> Always blame the user, isn't it? So I downloaded the programs, this letter of program, I reviewed the code. And I found a problem. So the next day I was totally excited. I was young back then. I ran up. I found your problem. You know this thing? Was he 
you happy? <laughs> Where are the developers? If someone comes up to you, I found you a fall. You did it wrong. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you are not developer. No experience might work. Go away. That's what he did. I recite and became a developer. But that's a problem. How to engage? It's not the hippos, and I want to use the hippo analogy about the things you can waste a lot of time and energy on. Everybody likes hippos, isn't it? No. Who doesn't like hippos? You don't like hippos? It's a personal <laughs> thing. In the closest country, is a hippo? No? Just generally? Okay. Most people like hippos. I think that's great. I have some nice pictures there. Maybe you like the last, same last picture. Sorry? Yeah, of course, yes. Really like I had one talk about uh, Lord of the Rings in like India. The yeah, of course. Yeah, but that's just like <laughs> so many of them in pieces. Um, yeah, in India, I did a talk that was based on Lord of the Rings. And nobody knew about Lord of the Rings. It's kind of a bummer, you know, on the stage. Okay, but he was, they look nice, but they're actually quite dangerous. And the same for security, I will point out stuff where you can spend a lot of time and money and even ruin your security process because you spend money on the security hippos, as I want to tell them. So be aware of the hippos. So first, start about security myth. Because I say there's a current situation that developers and security guys don't talk as much to each other. It's our fault. And I say our fault as myself, as a security professional. We keep telling security is the business. It must be secure. There's no choice. Security above everything. Let's say we saying that always had. The always message statement was the finding, finding, defending causes unsecure software. Thanks. Black and white. Only secure software. We found out in 2008 we got smarter. We found out it doesn't work. We changed actually the mission statement to make security visible, the risks visible, so that business can make the right choice because the business, they get money. That's what you pay. We pay for it. So the main business thing is like, come on guys, get real. I said, I was away two weeks, nothing happened. Nobody died. So there must be, not all must be about security. Security is expensive because we spend a lot of time and money on very expensive tools, on very expensive, no one does loves me, security professional to hire because it's so complex, you need a security specialist. And he comes in with his black hoodie, well dressed, sits in his nice office, not too close to the developers because they don't know nothing about security. And they do the security magic. And you get a report. A PDF report. <laughs> and it lists all the security issues you have to fix. Ever had this situation? Developers, you ever got a security report? PDF? <laughs> no? You don't do it in security. Because what can you do as a developer when you get this PDF report? Nothing. You can print it out and throw it away. It does not work like that. Every security test, when a, when a security tester afterwards is not going down to developers, first of all, do the security review with the developers, and afterwards tell them what they did, how they did it, the report is worth less. They have a checkbox, yes, we had a security test. Compliancy. Complexity, I said. Isn't it weird, when you do a secure code review, what security guys, who does secure code reviews? That's good, because they said they have no development background, so stay your fingers off the security code. <laughs> because a secure code review, you have to know the technology, otherwise you cannot read the code. But still I see people doing secure code review and say, hey, I can read Java, so I must be able to do a code review because I have a very nice tool. The custom pays for the tool, I do the review, and they get a report. I get paid. That's not how it works. 
So when you review anything you review, you must master it. Otherwise you cannot review it. It would be like you're going to a car manufacturer and you see a guy holding on the brakes and say, hey, that's weird. And I do it at home, I do it differently. Yes, of course. Because he is professional, you are amateur. So that's very important. So what should be done? Or what should be avoided? First of all, security guys, stop the mean business. Learn to talk. Be friendly. And so many times I have that I am the security guy, so I'm much smarter than you guys because you build shit. And I break it. That's something I just wanted to tell the story when I did actually the code review. Still the scope. I only had to find the issue. And here we had the scope that everything is running and been stable and we put it somewhere and arms not hitting each other. But I only did the scope. That's actually the scope that security guys have. And even better, so code review, you need to know the technology. So you security guys, you don't do the code, code review, what do you do? This was not a rhetorical question. <laughs> what do you do? Manual, manual penetration testing, manual security, like test, uh, searching for non-functional defects. Non-functional defects? Okay, yeah, cryptography, session management, ah. authorization. And so on, so on. This is logic, yeah. So you look for security holes. What is your knowledge you need for your job? What do you need to understand? Be able to understand. So you need to understand how does HTTP, HTML works, how does session management works, cookies, you have heard about cookies, cryptography. And you know all that. There is nobody <laughs> who is a specialist in everything. None. I've never seen that. I want to see it. Maybe you need Marvin, you know, the little robot with a very big head. He can maybe know everything, but we cannot be a humans. But still, for a penetration test, and I don't know how it's here in the Netherlands, it's required by compliance and black box penetration test. How long does it take? Who does black box penetration testing? How long does that assignment take? Two, three weeks. Uh, two, three weeks. Two, three weeks? Oh, you are lucky. One month, one, one month, months, two months. Wow! You're not going to say one week. One week. It's so impossible. I need one day to set up, project intake, blah, blah, blah. Then I have three days to test because the fifth day I have to write a repo. But that's what we, uh, compliance says, it's security test. Compliance, we are good. It says I couldn't find anything in five days, so it must be secure. Or three days. So, meet security guys. Open up, light, actually start doing security tests to get a visit developers. Who of you doing security tests actually to get a visit development team? Together with development team? Yeah. Well, one. Two. Come on. Hmm. What are developers. <laughs> Whoever had a security guy on their work. What? Developers. Who had a security guy at the office testing their source code? Never? Very serious secure code. You never see them. <laughs> I once had a manager who said, Oh, yeah, if I take a report, I will cut report to report pieces to the right people. It's even worse than a PDF report, you get a part of a PDF report. Next thing is don't hide. As I said, they come in, they get in their own cubicle. Don't touch the the developers. They do the stop of the job from home, isn't it? Security hacker is a very good job because you can be at home in your underpants, feet on a table, eating pizza all day, drinking cola, do your security scan, and if the PDF report, you're done. They're going to reach out and talk and understand. So meet others very important. I would challenge you. Those who are sitting next to a colleague, can I can get you before the after party, stand up and sit to somebody you don't know? No. Yeah, yes, no. Oh. No. Oh. You want to do this right now? Yes. 
Okay, no problem. Can you stand up and sit next to somebody you don't know? Colleague. <laughs> 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 it's very hard for you to do not know. First he wings and then he opens me. Yeah, okay, we talk later. Okay. <laughs> okay, unfortunately, so we see people still trying to be with themselves. It's not people that know. I sit here, why should I move? No, no, why can move? I feel comfortable in my little shell. You, you look up to me, but you don't see me because of many people. Is that weird? When you see each other, then after the party, when you have some beers, it might be hard. I have a you drink. Pay attention. That's yeah, the contradiction in terms. Drink alcohol, be loose and pay attention. When you meet other people, it's very good to listen, not just to talk. Not to send, but also to receive. We hear about the pain and the daily frustrations they have. Understanding the context. That's for both sides. When you're a security guy, you do a pen test or security thing with something you don't know, you don't know the context, and then you have to say, oh, that's cross the scripting. I can't. It does not pass the security toll gate. No, good. The business comes, oh, it's good, I accept the risk. <laughs> Understand each other. Developers, what is your main priority? What keeps you awake? Is that weird? 
There's a very, I heard, not un, uh, it's an untrue, but it's a very nice anecdote that somebody asked Henry Ford, why do you have built in brakes into your cars? Why do cars have brakes? What do you think? Why does a car have has brakes? You know, everybody has a driving license? Because there was a requirement for that? Requirement? Because there was a requirement for In that? times of Henry Ford? <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing was going blasting 15 kilometers an hour. Safety? No. Yeah, but safety. What do you mean by safety? I mean that if you have some higher speed, you need to stop. Because you have, have to, to stop sometimes. <laughs> What's that? You have to stop sometimes. You have to stop? But back then there was nothing in the way. Maybe a cow. Yeah, stop at the cow. <laughs> External brakes. What he said is it. He said, to make driving faster and responsible and possible. Yeah. That is what security does. We don't want to be whole functionality. We want to get every functionality on a responsible yeah. way. People will exchange data. It can be emails, can be social security numbers, whatever. There will be exchanged money. What you are responsible as a security guy, make sure it's done on a responsible way. And don't say no. How many developers do DevOps? Continuous de uh, deployment. Ooh. So you are on a continuous delivery train. Yeah. And then comes security. Yes. Say stop. And you got a border, you got a security toll gate. That does really work. So you're coding, your code gets shipped, automated, tested, comes to the security toll gate. What security toll gates are there? When can we do a code review? What is the point of time we can start with code review? What is the earliest point of time you can start with code review? When you have a code. No. Zero, zero bytes. Look through the functionality. Sorry? After the QA, so look through the functionality. And if you uh, are yeah, architects review, we need code review. You don't need code. When you set up your automation tools, and you set up your development, uh, you build tools. That's the point where you configure your code review tools. Oh. So you have to load where you're uh, not getting through it. Then you start with your application server because you haven't code, but you're already importing libraries. You can check them, it's almost dependency check. So you don't need code written yourself when you start with this code review. Because when you start coding, you're already too late. It's code already has been written. And the review comes in the next day, so you already started coding for two weeks, and then you get first findings. Two weeks later, weeks later, too late. Instant feedback is so important. You do something wrong, smack. Oh god, smack. Please review this issue. Yeah? So and then comes the dynamic scanning. Where can you start with dynamic scanning? Sorry? Doing nightly builds. Doing nightly builds, but what in your development life cycle? What point on the build, setting up your target system you can start with a uh, dynamic code review? Dynamic application review? As soon as it will have some functionality that is Forget about functionality. The moment I have my target server, nothing out there, nothing configured, it's there. We can shoot at it. For TSL, TLS, sorry. Who is responsible for TLS? The application? DevOps. Yeah, the DevOps. <laughs> the other guys. <laughs> Developers, who is responsible for TLS implementation? <laughs> Sorry? Uh, and the ops, isn't it? Those who configure the application server. Does your code require TLS? No, it's application server. The moment I have the application server set, set down, I can shoot at it and I start dynamic code review. But most of the time it's, okay, we are now going from development to test, now we can do a code review. Two weeks later, one week later, then, oh, it's past the test, yay, we go to acceptance. Then we do the dynamic code review, then you find a fault, and then you've done all the way back to development. You lost already. So, the moment you set up stuff, you can already configure and automate your reviews. Do it early possible and do it automated. But it's one problem. You know about the difference between 
packs to floors. We know what is the pack. What is the pack? Sorry? Effect. Effect. It's a technical effect. What is the flow? Logical. Logical. Yeah, logical functional effect. Yeah. Who thinks there are more bugs than flaws? One. Two. Who thinks there are more flaws than bugs? What is the rest thing? Waste still sink. Waste still sink. Oh my god. Actually there's research, it's 50%. 50% bugs, 50% flaws. It's okay, sometimes in 48, 52, or 51, 49, but it's half half. That means 50% of all security issues, indeed, you can already stop when you do the code with uh, this architectural review or the review of the functionality. 50%. That's a lot. Very early, before you wrote a one line of code or configure your target server. So it's important to make fun uh, functionalities. Able and able developers, and able functionality in a responsible way. Appreciate. Appreciation is the least thing we do good in the IT sector. I'm from the Netherlands, a Netherlands is a really expensive country. So how long in the Ukraine are you a junior developer? Three years in the past. Sorry? Yeah, two years. Oh, two years. Ah, that's why we're more expensive. We're much faster. The Netherlands is six months. When you are a media developer. Six months. It's scary, isn't it? But then you're a media developer. So in Ukraine, how long do you stay a media developer before you become a senior developer? Two or three years. One year, two years. One year, two years? And then it's two, two years. But then in Ukraine you have four years experience, and then once they have two and a half, three years experience, they are senior. So the history sensation is four years maybe, when they did some coding in the study time. Isn't it scary? So they know nothing about what happened in the past. That's the problem that we have now with all the IoT and funny stuff and apps, because they trust, imagine that they trust the framework. They think, hey, Apple wrote Xcode in the iOS framework, it must be secure. Microsoft has the .NET framework, it must be secure, isn't it? Unfortunately, no framework is secure. But that's the problem. So the, the history, the feeling, the experience, the wetterness is missing. And then you come as a developer and you're telling the business, okay, the functionality, I need two weeks. And the business always says, too low, fast. Then yes, but I need to do um, refactoring of the source code. It's like, what? <laughs> I have to refactor the source code. What? <laughs> I don't pay for refactoring. I pay for null functionality. <laughs> I have a customer like that. What? And my allowance for that was when I had my house painted. And the painter asked me, do you want to have it? Cheap or quality? And I asked, what is the difference? He said, ah, the price. Convincing. And then he says, good job, a uh, good uh, cheap job. I have only two layers of cheap of paint. And if you do quality, I have three layers of more expensive paint. I thought, why do you need three layers for more expensive paint? But okay. I thought, what well, is about the pre work, the getting all the colors off, getting everything fixed and smooth? I have to do it anyway. As a developer also, code refactoring is not a business decision. It's something you do on a daily job. There are very nice books on it. Uncle Bob read it. But code quality is the most important thing. And you as a developer should worry and keep away about code quality. And I hope that coding is your passion. And you want to be proud about your source code. And not, oh, I wrote this code before over the season. It's kind of very deep in the Java. Full quality. Appreciation. So in the Netherlands, you are always too expensive as a developer.
because the unit developers of after six months, they are very really cheap. And they always select, they ask for education. What? Training? Conferences? And guess what? In the Netherlands, of course, it's an expensive country, we earn more money. So you always get like, ah, we think about outsourcing our development. That makes you really feel appreciated. Isn't it? So yeah, we keep you on for the next half year, but maybe you go to India. Oh yeah, thank you. But we really want you to do your work good, because we really, really appreciate you. No, that's not good. So without appreciation, you don't go and do a good job. It makes a difference what kind of job you have. If you're a developer, a pen test, or a toddler, guy, the moment you're not appreciated, you don't proud about your work, you will not do a good job. We are tricks. I had many times that the security guy said, well, ah, we can solve it differently. We said, oh, you are, you're not 20 anymore, are you? You are both beyond 20. Yes, beyond 20. So, hey, he's not your developer. You are a developer. Right? So, you are our security champion now. So, he is he's responsible for the so called uh, security is done, huh? You do the checkboxing and tooling. So, you develop, and he does the security developer. I see stuff like that happening. Because, hey, we need a developer to do the security, he's mature, he has the body for it so he can enforce it. You do the security developer. The rest of development, and he does the security, will not work. Very off configurations. So very important things is for a don't upset the other. The moment there's a there's studies about when you engage other people, apparently the first impression is done in three minutes, you know, three seconds, ten seconds of time. When you don't like somebody after three minutes, it's very unlikely you ever will like the other. So the moment you as a security guy come in being arrogant and don't appreciate development work, not even listening to them, don't understand what the application is doing, you lost. When you lost the engagement of the developers, you don't even have to care about the report. You can throw it in the bin directly. Because one thing, the security is very important. Security is not a one-man job, it's not a two-man job. It's a collaborative job. Everybody who's involved. When you want to help somebody, nice word, an answer to a shut up and listen. Thanks. Before that, you can use uh, always dependency checker or in a call. You 
get your mail or whatever build script and you import your libraries and you will scan against the uh, vulnerability database. So a lot of tools out there. Some automation analyzer tool with this smart, smart PDF to create some reports. Uh, because really, OWASP creates Honor reports for auto analyzer. Who? OWASP. <laughs> OWASP do it's not some great reports. No, 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 no. It generates tons of logs, okay. Yes, I think OWASP has a problem about uh, the, how easy our website is. Everything's fine. The fine, the wiki is really a pain. I know that. And there's many activities to improve them. Um, one thing is, uh, there are no good open source static code review tools, but there are really good open source code quality tools. For example, Java, Pinebox, PMD, Checkstar. You can really integrate, and for example, PMD is something that takes pain in the beginning because it's completely rude, but when you really turn it up, optimize it, you have a very early. Quality based security check. So it's, it increases quality of your code because code quality means the code is doing and only doing what it's supposed to do. So they have good tools. Then you have paid uh, uh, secure code review tools. You can also integrate in your nicely built. And the reporting. The reporting is the hard bit. And I see that for uh, also security reports because you have the different tools, they all have a different way to report. There are some tools, uh, for example, ThreadKick is open source, I think. Uh, then if you have one tool, one dashboard, you can even have your IDE, that's very important. Because most of the tools say, okay, you're a developer, have your IDE, and there's your security tool. And ThreadKick integrates in your IDE. So in your IDE, you can see the security reports. So you do an IDE build, you run through the test, you upload all the security data reports to one uh, portal. And then you get one dashboard for touring issues. Do you know of any tools that do automated regression testing in terms of security? Uh, free? <laughs> yes, but they don't want to break for other people. We talk about this private. Yes, they have tools. Every time you're asking about free, what about Fayable tool? And yeah, how much they cost? Tools are paid for, but I am not a sponsor logo on myself, so I don't will break for the other one or the other. I work, I'm independent, I work with everyone. So, so from talk. your experience, what, what is the best one? It depends on what you want to test. Is Security. <laughs> wrong thought. You want to test technology, for example, code review. Mm -hmm. What technology do you use? For example, Fortify is one of the old and best. It's a machine of code review tools. It's very good in Java and C. But in scripting languages, as PHP and uh, Python, checkbox is better. In other tools, it's for the referral code better. So not just taking a tool for the cheapest or a light mouse, but take a tool for the purpose you need it for. What is the most expensive tool which you are using for code review? The most expensive? Yeah. Humans. Yeah. Okay. Hire me. How much do you want to spend? I'm the manager. I know that it's the most, most yeah. expensive tool. So. It depends on, again, because one uh, says pair application. So when you have many applications, you don't have a tool to charge a pair application. If you have one application, you. So it's depending on your situation, on, on the light small. Let's imagine a situation that you have infinity budget. And Sorry? You have infinite budget. Infinite budget, yes. I will use much, uh, more than one tool. If I have infinite budget, I will use all the tools. Because there was a uh, uh, investigation about security tools, how much of vulnerabilities you can find. What do you think? I know that's right. Do you know the slide? No. Yeah, I know the slide. Yeah. It's 45%. If you have all the tools. If you have all tools and they would do everything they promised. What they did, they asked every tool vendor, what can your tool do? They didn't test it, they didn't feel it, they just believed in the blue eyes. And all by together, of course they cannot go beyond 50% because 50% it's functionality and tools cannot test functionality. They only can test technical this box, level box. And all together, not even made a 50%. So they need all the tools together. And knowledge, human knowledge, and scripting skills. Talk to you later on the trigger.
Thanks. Thanks.